welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel i'm shalvista yeah a 65 year old male known case of type 2 diabetes cad paroxysmal af present to the er with complaints of epigastric pain and vomiting of one day duration on our initial 10 second assessment the patient was conscious and oriented and obeying commands coming to airway airway was patent no pooling of secretions no hoarseness of voice coming to breathing Uh, respiratory rate of 24 per minute saturation of 98 percentage in room air air entry was bilaterally equal coming to circulation bp of 130 per 80 mm of mercury pulse rate of 100 beats per minute all peripheral pulses were equally palpable coming to disability gcs of 15 by 15 bilateral pupil equally reacting to light coming to exposure temperature of 98.2 degree fahrenheit grbs of 160 mg per deciliter the pain score of this patient was 6 by 10 so 1 g uh, paracetamol iv stat was given at this point of time coming to adjuncts of primary survey an ecg was taken which showed sinus tachycardia no acute stt changes vbg was taken showing a ph of 7.40 pco2 of 40 bicarb of 23 lactate of 1.6 uh, serum amylase and lipase were sent at this point of time so what to are your differential diagnosis after your primary survey we have an elderly 63 year old male patient with epigastric pain and vomiting he had a past history of uh, atrial paroxysmal af yeah. diabetes and cad okay what are your dds uh, from the emergency the most common presentation of abdominal pain will be an acute gastritis mm. uh, from the emergency point of view the patient had a history of cad mm. Uh, so we need to rule out inferior wall mi mm. uh, which we taken an ecg mm. and was normal mm. and the patient also gives history of paroxysmal af mm. so we were suspecting mesenteric ischemia mm. uh, but the lactate everything were at present normal mm. then the other causes can be uh, pancreatitis mm. uh, cholecystitis uh, or any aneurysm with any dissection mm. uh, diverticulitis can mm. also be other causes mm. Uh, elderly patient with abdominal and then most common cause of epigastric pain is gastritis and uh, acid peptic disease can be there then ga malignancy can be there which can cause a obstruction and cause these symptoms or malignancy itself can induce these things okay uh, okay so we took an ecg ruled out an mi we took a vbg um, checked the acid base status was there any hypokalemia or anything no no hypokalemia so vomiting induced hypokalemia nothing was there lactate was also normal um, okay uh, then amylase and lipase was an in view of pan, uh, suspecting a pancreatitis then we will have to do a ultrasound abdomen also um, to look for any pancreatitis features or any mass lesions seen and we will have to take a chest x ray chest x ray for what Uh, to look for uh, any signs of pleural effusion if in the case of any pancreatitis mm. and to rule out any uh, other uh, pneumonia basal mm. pneumonitis basal pneumonia, pneumonia. and air under the diaphragm also can be checked if we are suspecting uh, per, uh, any uh, perforation peritonitis okay coming to sample history a 65 year old male known case of type 2 diabetes cad paroxysmal af complaints of uh, abdominal pain of one day duration it was epigastric region colicky type of pain acute and it was uh, radiating to the back that decreases on bending forward position and increases on supine position it was associated with vomiting three episodes non projectile contains food particles uh, no history of any obstipation uh, abdominal distension fever uh, loss of weight evening rise of temperature yellowish discoloration of the eyes loose stools the patient also gives history of uh, binge drinking of alcohol uh, for the past 3 days uh, coming to syst- systemic ex- uh, no history of any allergies in the past no history of any drug allergies uh, the patient is currently on metformin and uh, antiplatelets coming to systemic examination uh, general examination no pallor no ictus no cyanosis no clubbing no generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema so this patient is on anti platelet mm-hmm. so it can be an uh, anti platelet echoes aspirin induced gastritis yes. he is an alcoholic so it can be alcoholic gastritis or it can be pancreatitis alcohol induced pancreatitis and classical history of uh, pain by um, in supine position and 
pain that reduces in uh, bending, bending forward. forward is also there okay uh, coming to systemic examination inspection abdomen was soft uh, no scars no sinuses no visible peristalsis hernial orifices and genitalia were normal uh, no discoloration around the umbilicus or in the flanks or in the inguinal region coming to palpation tenderness present in the epigastric region no hepatosplenomegaly no guarding or no rigidity coming to percussion tympanic node was observed bowel sounds were present uh, perectal examination was not done Uh, coming to serious examination s1 s2 present no murmurs respiratory system uh, normal vesicular breath sounds air entry was bilaterally equal uh, no abnormal sounds cns examination gcs was 15 by 15 bilateral pupil equally reacting to light moving all four limbs uh, so uh, at present we were suspecting uh, alcohol induced gastritis or can be uh, pancreatitis since the patient gives history of typical epigastric pain mm. that is radiating to the back and decrease on bending forward position also abdomen pain only was this epigastric tenderness uh, what else will you um, in a case of pancreatitis what are the other signs in abdomen uh, we will look for any uh, complications of if hemorrhagic mm. pancreatitis were present then mm. there can be discoloration in the umbilicus mm. uh, discoloration in the flanks and discoloration in the mm. uh, inguinal region if mm. you are suspecting hemorrhagic pancreatitis what are the signs called uh, fox sign uh, which is called uh, discoloration in the umbilical re- inguinal region that is called fox fox sign cullen sign that is discoloration in the umbilicus region and mm. gray turner sign discoloration in the flanks, flanks. Mm. Uh, so at this point of time uh, we went ahead with ust abdomen mm. and ust abdomen showed features suggestive of pancreatitis mm. uh, with uh, minimal peripancreatic fluid collections were noted mm. uh, no ihbrd no goldstones further okay so uh, what are the other things we lo- that we will um, check in uh, ust abdomen in case of pancreatitis we will check whether the pancreas is appearing bulky especially pancreatic head whether it is appearing bulky then why did you che- uh, ask uh, tell about the gold stones these things and all uh, because uh, gold stone is the most common precipitating factor of pancreatitis in india mm. uh, so if gold stones are present uh, then uh, the management will be biliary pancreatitis, biliary pancreatitis uh. and we will plan about ercp mm. if no gold stones are present then we will go ahead with uh, conservative management mm. routine uh, conservative we will have to evaluate for some other cause okay now then uh, in usc abdomen we can also look for local complications mm. like peripancreatic fluid collections any mm. pseudo cyst in the pancreas mm. and uh, uh, other pancreatic ascites anything is there mm. this can also be seen in usc abdomen so uh, complication features we can be seen and like necrosis or any abscess around that area uh, in the splenic veins and the veins in near the pancreas there can be venous thrombosis or uh, if there is any blood supply the arterial supplies there can be some aneurysm pseudo aneurysms of the um, blood vessels can be there then as you told the biliary obstruction secondary to the stones can be there um, bowel ischemia these changes won't be seen much in ultrasound but bowel ischemia changes also can also be there okay uh, so we basically uh, look for complications in pancreatitis classified into two local complications and mm-hmm. systemic complications mm-hmm. the local complications like uh, pancreatic ascites peripancreatic collections pseudo cyst of the pancreas mm-hmm. vascular complications and uh, left sided pleural effusions and mm-hmm. ards in severe cases mm-hmm. Uh, systemic complications like systemic inflammatory response syndrome sepsis leading to septic shock uh, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome and even congestive heart failure can be seen uh, based on the complications we can divide uh, there is atlanta classification which divide uh, pancreatitis into uh, based on local and systemic complications in local complications uh, it will be absent local and systemic complications will be absent then it is atlanta classification a if local complications are present but the systemic complications are transient for less than 48 hours then it is atlanta classification 2 and if both local complications and systemic complications are present then it comes under atlanta classification 3 Uh, then we uh, when he had with uh, when we talk about complications there can be local complications systemic as you said so uh, systemic when you, when you tell systemic there can be organ specific complications like gi to gi necrosis these features renal failure can be there oliguria um, 
renal shutdown can be there, acute kidney injury can be there, cardiac complications and also we will have to mention about the electrolyte abnormality. Which all are the electrolyte abnormalities in case of pancreatitis? In pancreatitis, uh, we have to look for calcium levels because mm -hmm. hypocalcemia can be there due to saponifications. Mm, saponification of the amylase lipase because of that uh, this thing can be there um, then only hypocalcemia i know uh, the patient can be severely dehydrated so if mm. there is hypernatremia that indic indic indirectly indicates mm. there is severe dehydration and also hematocrit was also normal in this case but mm. if the hematocrit is more than 40 50 then it also indicates dehydration and mm. the patient has multiple episodes of vomiting mm. so there can be hypokalemia in that case that was also normal in our, our conditions. Uh, since this is an elderly patient, um, hypocalcemia can be because of pancreatitis. But if it is, if the patient is having hypercalcemia and pancreatitis, what all, what might be the primary cause? Uh, maybe any hyperparathyroidism. Uh, hyperparathyroidism. Okay, hyperparathyroidism is one of the most common. Uh, like uh, uh, parathyroid adenoma is one of. Uh, common cause for hyperparathyroidism and hypercalcemia but in this age malignancies malignancy mm. uh, multiple myeloma these things can all any local malignancy or abdominal malignancy or somewhere else these things can cause hypercalcemia hypercalcemia can cause pancreatitis okay uh, then at this point of time our amylase and lipase reports came mm. and amylase was around 430 and lipase was 850. Mm. Is amylase very specific? Uh, amylase is not that specific. Amylase uh, can be elevated in other conditions also. It can be elevated in volvulus, salpingitis, mesenteric ischemia, mm. even in perforation amylase mm. can be elevated. Mm. Amylase, uh, it is... In uh, cholecystitis, appendicitis and all, it will be elevated. Now, other thing is, amylase, it can be um, increased in hypertriglyceridemia and in alcoholic patients. So, since he is an alcoholic and if amylase is uh, increased, we cannot confirm it as pancreatitis. Mm. Uh, amylase is rapidly produced and it has a shorter half life. Mm -hmm. So, after one, two to three days, if the patient presents, then in that case, lipase is more specific, specific and lipase alone will be elevated in that case because uh, lipase has a longer half life. Uh, and lipase is more specific for uh, acute pancreatitis. Okay. Also. Uh, so, our uh, according to the latest edition of Sebastian, uh, the diagnostic criteria for pancreatitis is one is a typical presentation that is pain in the epigastric region that is radiating to the back. So, first step is clinical, clinical, clinical diagnosis. Okay. Uh, then, a laboratory investigation that is serum amylase and lipase more than three times the upper limit of normal. Mm -hmm. That was the second criteria. Third, it was imaging suggestive of features of pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. If any two is positive, then we are uh, more likely diagnostic of uh, pancreatitis. So, here all the three, all are, the three were positive. Uh, then uh, after diagnosing pancreatitis, we initially kept the patient in NPO. Mm. Why uh, we are keeping the patient in NPO? Uh, we have to give bowel trust to the patient uh, mm. because the ileus will be uh, hyperactive. So basically pain, to decrease the pain. Uh, NPO is mainly when we are e taking in food, uh, the pancreas will produce more amylase and lipase. So, when more amylase and lipase comes, there will be more auto digestion. Uh, problem with uh, what is the main pathophysiology of pancreatitis? Usually, this amylase, lipase, all the digestive enzymes should be taken to the bowel and should act in the bowel. But here, the amylase and lipase in pancreatitis this both will get activated in the pancreas itself. So, pancreas will get auto digested. So, if you are taking food, that amylase lipase will be again produced. So, we are not, and the patient will again have pain and the patient's pancreas also will get affected. So, we'll, that's why we are keeping NPO. Mm. Uh, then we uh, started, the most likely patient can have severe dehydration. Mm. So, we started the patient on IV fluids, mm. basically uh, ringer lactate or uh, other balanced crystalloids can be mm. started. Mm. Then so, ringer lactate is the best for pancreatitis. Other than normal saline, sodium with chloride content, ringer lactate is the best or we can use plasma light. Okay. Uh, then the third uh, How much fluid should we give? Uh, 
we can give according to the patient uh, this is elderly patient but usually if you are getting a young patient we can give 5 to 10 ml per kg per hour we can give that much that much patient might be deficient in so around 250 to 500 ml per hour we can give uh, the patient we'll have to hydrate that much okay so hydration is the main analgesic in a case of pancreatitis it is like a pancreatitis is somewhat like a fire inside the abdomen so we'll have to pour more and more water to it so the main uh, analgesic of choice is uh, what what is the analgesic of choice fluid we are giving that mm. will reduce the pain then what is the analgesic we mm, can give paracetamol tramadol uh, the best analgesic in pancreatitis is Opioid. Yes. Opioid. So, uh, uh, if we diagnose it as if it is a known case of pancreatitis coming with recurrence of that and not, if you already know it is pancreatitis, better give opioid itself. Okay. So, so better give uh, tramadol or fentanyl. So, pain management is the third line. Uh, so, we started the patient initially on PCM mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, we didn't know what the uh, diagnosis was. So, initially paracetamol was given. So, okay. And we started with opioids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then uh, we give... Uh, then the next question was whether it was any... Uh, do we need to start the patient on antibiotics or not? Mm -hmm. But at present, we haven't started because there was no indication for There is no systemic sepsis or anything. So, no need to start antibiotics right. routinely in pancreatitis patient. Okay. Uh, the only indication to start antibiotics in pancreatitis is if there is severe necrosis, uh, that is necrosis more than uh, 50 percentage, or there is severe pancreatitis that involves other systems, uh, multi uh, multiple complications. Well, in that cases, we will uh, start the patient on uh, antibiotics and the antibiotic of choice, it is meropenemus usually uh, is the antibiotic of choice that is documented. Mm. Uh, but in our condition, there was no uh, complication and no indications for antibiotics. So, mm. we haven't started antibiotics. Mm. Mm. With our uh, second injection of, of opioids, uh, the pain score came down to 2 by 10. Uh, and uh, we haven't started uh, ERCP in this patient because we were not suspecting biliary pancreatitis. ERCP is what not... What might be the cause for this patient? Alcohol can be the Alcohol cause for... Can, so, what are the most common causes of pancreatitis? Uh, Goldstone is one major mm, cause, then alcohol. Second is alcohol. Mm. Then drugs can be there. Mm. Uh, chemotherapy drugs, and drugs. Is he taking any um, drugs that can cause pancreatitis? Uh, what are the common drugs? Chemotherapy, um, common so, drugs. So, malignancy came, patient with chemotherapy. chemotherapy then drugs, antiretroviral antiretroviral drugs. drugs. Uh, thiazide diuretics can cause. Mm. Uh, then, uh, metronidazole can mm. cause. Uh, Certain antibiotics can cause. And antihypertensives. You told he is having paroxysmal AF. So, what? If he is on amiodaron, then mm. amiodaron can also cause drug induced pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. Antituberculosis drugs can cause. And chemotherapy and immunosuppressants can also cause. Then um, anti-epileptic drugs also can cause. Okay. So, uh, so no drug suggestive of the cause. Then uh, Goldstone is not there. Then uh, a positive thing is alcohol. Alcohol, alcohol is there. Then uh, if suppose patient is not alcoholic, what else should we think? Yeah, the causes can be hyperparathyroidism, mm. increased triglycerides. Mm. Uh, even can it can be any idiopathic or any congenital defects like any other pancreatic defects. Sage congenital defects. Exactly. Right. GI malignancy is a possibility, so, or uh, or pan uh, in, uh, pancreas pancreatic mass or any uh, periambulary masses, or the patient if it is having any uh, viral or bacterial infection around the bowel or any bowel trauma, uh, these things can. Uh, affect the pancreas okay it is documented that even scorpion bite can cause uh, pancreatitis. pancreatitis also uh, then we uh, our bedside scoring system was done mm. there are multiple scoring system for pancreatitis mm. uh, but the most commonly used bedside scoring system is the BSAP score mm. uh, which contains uh, five parameters like blood urea nitrogen more than 25 milligram per deciliter impaired mental status systemic inflammatory response syndrome age more than 60 and plural effusion. If the score each is given one point each and if the score is less than two, uh, the chance of mortality will be 0.5 percentage. If it is equal to two, then it is approximately two percentage. If the score is more than or equal to three, then it comes to around five to 20 percentage. In our patient, it was only age that is more than 60. So uh, it comes under less than two. The score, the mortality is 0.5 percentage only. 
then the other scoring systems which can be used uh, are the apache scoring system uh, and the modified marshall scoring system that is for mainly for organ dysfunction if the mar uh, modified marshall score that is more than or equal to 2 that sig signifies uh, organ dysfunction and severe pancreatitis apache score more than or equal to 8 and even CRP alone that is more than or equal to 150 are features suggestive of severe pancreatitis. The other scoring systems are uh, the Glasgow criteria that was previously used uh, which contains uh, PAO2 less than 8, age more than 55, neutrophils more than 15,000, uh, serum calcium level less than 2, uh, urea more than 16, LD is more than 650, albumin less than 3.2 and uh, uh, sodium more than uh, 140 uh, so this is the Glasgow criteria if it is e each criteria is given one point that is more than or equal to three that is suggestive of severe pancreatitis the other scoring system that is used was the Ransom scoring system that has separate for alcoholic and biliary pancreatitis it is taken at two times at the time of admission and also after 48 okay. hours uh, the parameters that are looked at uh, the total count, the age, uh, the uh, liver enzymes, LDH, hematocrit, blood urea, nitrogen, serum calcium level, arterial PO2 and the base deficit. If it is less than 3, then the chance of mortality uh, is very less. If it is 3 to 5, the mortality is 11 to 15 percentage. Uh, then uh, uh, that is the initial scoring system. Then after 24 to 48 hours, uh, we will plan uh, for CT abdomen uh, to rule out further complication. And the best invest uh, the best scoring system among this is the uh, the investigation of choice is also CT, uh, but is done after 48 hours to look for complications. And the scoring system which is used in CT is the CT severity index or the Balthasar scoring system, uh, which take into account uh, the anatomical nature of the pancreas and the extent of pancreatic necrosis. If the pancreas is normal or any focal enlargement or other pancreatic abnormalities, peripancreatic collections, uh, that is in uh, localizing only to a single locations, uh, the number of uh, collections uh, or gas bubbles adjacent to the pancreas, based on that this uh, scoring is uh, from 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Pancreatic necrosis, if there is absent necrosis, 1 by 3rd necrosis, uh, one and a half necro necrosis and more than half of the pancreas and necros if the scores are 0, 2, 4 and 6. If it is more than or equal to 6 then it is indicative of severe pancreatitis. Uh, then coming to the pathology of the uh, pancreatitis it is basically there will be a pathological stimulus that triggers then as a result mm -hmm. there will be increased calcium inside the uh, pancreas that causes co-localization and fusion of cymogen and the lysosome that releases uh, catepsin B from the trypsinogen that further increases trypsin that increases the inflammatory markers like interleukin 1, 6 and 10 and other inflammatory markers that triggers the inflammation in uh, pancreatitis whereas in biliary pancreatitis uh, it is a biliary reflex that triggers the inflammation then coming to the basic investigations once we diagnose pancreatitis is like uh, we have to look at the hematocrit for signs of dehydration like CBC, CRP, uh, if, uh, then USC abdomen to look for uh, the local complications, uh, gallstones and ISBRD. Alkaline phosphatase has to be sent because it is indicative of obstructive jaundice with elevator. Mm -hmm. Then calcium levels, then chest x-ray for pleural effusions, RFT because even AK can be there in case of severe pancreatitis and sodium potassium levels has also to be sent. The, uh, the space, if we are not remembering any scoring system, we at least we will have to think five things in case of pancreatitis patient if we are managing that patient with IV fluids and all. One thing we will have to keep in mind is we should, if one contraindication for overhydrating a patient with pancreatitis is what? If the patient is having uh, a complication that is ARDS. That if the patient is having ARDS then we will have to go for a fluid restrictive therapy or if the patient is having a renal failure and pulmonary then also we will have to go for a fluid restriction. Otherwise uh, we will be 
see watching the patient and if the patient is improving the patient's hematocrit will be come out somewhat coming in a normal value patient will be having adequate urine output at least 0.5 to 1 ml per kg per hour urine output will be there and patient will not go into tachycardia otherwise the patient because of the release of the interleukin cytokine these thing the patient will have a tendency to go for tachycardia if the heart rate is less than 120 then we should be happy then bp also should be maintained with a map of 65 so um Uh, at uh, hematocrit value urine output value uh, then the uh, heart rate and bp if these things are okay then we can plan on shifting him to ward and we can manage from there uh, when should we start feeding for him uh, ideally it is best to start the feeding at the earliest because uh, the if you stall rating mm. because uh, delayed f- feeding can lead to infections because there will be mobility of the gut bacteria mm. so to minimize the mobility of the gut bacteria if the if you stall rating it is better to start feeding at the earliest so initially we can start clear liquids and see if the patient is not having feed a pain then we can um, slowly um, uh, give semi solid diet and then come back to normal diet okay anything else uh, in this patient since he was alcoholic we mm-hmm. also given uh, injection timing Time. was also given mm-hmm. uh, if it is uh, goldstone then we have to uh, go with er so mm-hmm. based on the etiology we have to manage the underlying cause mm-hmm. so what was the uh, cause in this patient alcoholic alcohol was the cause, cause. okay okay thank you